Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme and this is a video about trying to find the best EEG reference. This subject has been debated for several decades now and it still is. However, in some circumstances, we know what the best reference is. So first, what is an EEG reference? When we measure any electrical potential, and that includes EEG, we measure the potential of one electrode compared to another one. So for example, we measure the potential of E2 with respect to E1. In EEG, you can also measure the potential of several electrodes. Here, E2 to E5 with respect to a common reference E1. The reference location can be anywhere. Usually, you want to pick a location where there is almost no brain signal. This is why people use the nose or earlobes. However, sometimes we also use reference on the scalp, such as CZ at the vertex or mastoid electrodes. In this case, you can also compare your data to experiments using the same reference unless you re-reference the data offline. And we will see how to do that. So let's assume we're recording channel CZ and T7 uh, with respect to uh, reference TP10, which is on the right mastoid behind the ear. Channel 1 is the potential of CZ minus TP10, and channel 2 is the potential of T7 minus TP10. Imagine we want to compare with another study that used CZ as a reference. Even though we did not use CZ, we can use simple math to compute the potential of T7 and TP10 as if we use CZ as a reference. For the first channel, it's easy. We uh, can just compute the opposite. So instead of CZ minus TP10, we have TP10 minus CZ. We take the opposite as shown here. Uh, to get T7 with reference to CZ, we can simply subtract uh, the signal from the first channel uh, to the second channel. As you see here, TP10 cancels out and we now have the potential of T7 with reference to CZ. That's relatively simple, but often you will see the reference as linked ear or linked mastoid. How do we do that? You can't record the data with uh, two reference channels, so you uh, record the signal with one reference and calculate the link reference offline. So let's say we have channel 1 uh, is FC minus ear 1, and channel 2 is ear 2 minus ear 1. Instead of ear 1 as the reference, we want the reference to be the average of ear 1 and ear 2. This is what link earlobe reference is. To do that, we can just compute channel 1 minus channel 2 divided by 2. We will call this channel channel 1 prime, and channel 1 prime is equal to this, which simplifies to FC minus the average of the two ear channels. Uh, channel 2 prime is equal to ear 2 minus the link ears. And we can compute channel 3 prime equals to uh, minus channel 2 minus channel 2 divided by 2 to obtain ear 1 minus the link ears. Uh, this was for link ears, but if we had mastoid references, we could do the same for link mastoids. Then we have other types of reference, which are usually used for epilepsy. These are bipolar references, meaning that uh, electrodes are referenced in the daisy chain. Electrode A is referenced uh, to B, B is referenced to C, C is referenced to D, etc. The first bipolar montage is called double banana because as you can see, it looks like two bananas. Uh, the arrows indicate the reference. This is used by clinician in epilepsy. When they look at the data uh, referenced in this way, they can get the approximate location of the epileptogenic source. Uh, they sometimes also use another bipolar montage, the circumferential montage, to get a better idea of the approximate uh, source location. These montages are not used in EEG research. In EEG research, we most commonly use the average reference. It's also called uh, CAR, C-A-R, for common average reference. The average reference comes from the fact that if you have electrical current source inside the head, the net current potential on a 3D spherical surface that represents the head is zero. As an approximation, uh, we consider that the net potential across the scalp is zero. However, uh, there are two potential issues with average reference. 
first recent work has proven that even if it's true for sphere, uh, this is not the case for other geometries, like the one we use to model the brain, skull, and scalp. Second, even if it was true, we usually do not have a uniform distribution of electrodes on the head surface. We rarely have electrodes on the face. Uh, for example, we do not have electrodes inside the neck. Yet, uh, average reference is still the most widely used reference. So let's see how uh, we can compute it. We cannot collect EEG data with an average reference. Instead, uh, we collect EEG data with a common reference. And it can be any type of reference. And then we transform the reference. The average reference assumption is that the sum of the potential of all the channels is zero. Assume 64 channels and a common mastoid reference TP10. Let's say we sum the activity of all the 64 channels recorded with reference TP10. Then this sum is equal to the sum of the potential of all channels minus 64 times the reference. Now here comes the trick. With the average reference assumption, the sum of all channel potential is zero. It turns out that under the average reference assumption, the potential of the common reference TP10 is equal to minus the sum of all channels divided by 64. If we want the potential of one channel, for example, F10, we can just add back the calculated TP10 potential. Now we have the potential of F10 under the average assumption, and we can do that for all channels, of course. Uh, two minor points here. First, uh, the potential of TP10 with the common TP10 reference is zero at all time. However, uh, we can include it in the average reference. In this case, TP10 is minus the sum of all channels divided by 65 instead of 64. Typically, we would include a scalp channel in the reference, but uh, not a non-scalp channel, uh, like link ears or nose. Uh, second minor point, uh, what if you remove bad channels? then the average reference is biased. In this case, in EEG lab, we allow people to temporarily interpolate bad channels for computing the reference. Another type of reference is called the infinity reference and is allegedly the least biased method. It was designed by Yao in 2001 and has become popular over the past two decades. The method is uh, based on the reasonable assumption that you do not want brain potential to affect the reference signal. So you can place the reference very, very far away. Even with the nose or earlobe, you are capturing brain activity. And of course, it makes little sense to use a reference that so would not be on the body uh, of the subject because it would be sensitive to all kinds of noise. But in theory, a noise-free reference far from the subject if possible, at an infinite distance uh, would be ideal. How do we compute it? Uh, so imagine two source X1 and X2 that project on the scalp, uh, where we would call potential V1, V2, and V3. Then based on Maxwell's equation, uh, you have a linear transformation matrix. Here uh, is an example of transformation. V1 equals 0 0.34 X1 plus 0 0.23 X2 and V2 and V3 are a different linear combination of x1 and x2. If we write this in matrix format, this is how it would look like. And this is the summary notation uh, when we represent capital V as the vector v1, v2, v3, and capital X as the vector x1 and x2. This is only for two sources, but usually matrix G is calculated for a couple of thousand sources for example, 2,000 sources for standard uh, Loretta. Matrix G is also called the lead field matrix. To calculate this matrix, we do not need to know the reference. Instead, we can use a bunch of math that considers the head's geometry and the conductance of each tissue. Uh, the calculation assumes an ideal reference not affected by brain sources. In other words, an infinite reference. Now here comes the trick. Using simple math not shown here, I can calculate G average from G, which is the lead field matrix assuming an average reference. Then by combining the two equations, I can compute V, the potential with an infinite reference using the average, the potential of the electrode with average reference, G and G average. And this is not specific to average reference. I could do the same for a mastered reference. 
I can compute G mastoid and derives the potential at infinity in a similar way. Now, this solution is not perfect. One issue is that it depends on the accuracy of your head model, as outlined in this paper. You can also have other reference-free technique, and I want to briefly mention here ICA, Independent Component Analysis, which EGLAB pioneered. ICA component activities are reference-free. In fact, if you run ICA in EGLAB and re-reference the data, the ICA scalp topography will change, but the component activity will not. Now, let's look at what the EEG data looks like when using different references. In this plot, we have ERP associated with face photograph. We can see that the ERP waveform is different based on the reference. For example, on the nose channel, look at how different the ERP looks like based on the reference. For electrode PO4, you can uh, see that uh, the N170, which is an ERP at about 170 millisecond post stimulus specific to faces, is present for the nose and average reference, but is greatly reduced in amplitude for the mastoid reference. This other article shows uh, the scalp topography of alpha power for different references. We can see that both the amplitude and the topography look different based on the reference. Finally, here we have another typical ERP called the Event Related Negativity, or ERN for short, comparing the ERP or co of correct responses versus errors uh, in the discrimination task. The ERN is measured between 200 and 400 millisecond post response. Here we see the mean and standard deviation for the correct in red and errors in blue. Note that this is part of a larger linear uh, model with many variables. It shows that the choice of reference can influence ERP amplitude and statistics. It makes sense that changing the reference would influence the statistic at one channel. This is because the difference between conditions might be more prominent on some channels uh, than on others. However, is there a reference that's better than all others? So this is what we tried to test. We used EEG data from an auditory oddball task. So imagine beep, beep, boop, beep. And the task of the subject is to press the, a button on the boops only. Here is how it sounds. The beep sounds are frequent and called standards, and the boop sounds are rare and called oddballs. In this kind of oddball task, we usually observe a difference between the ERPs of oddball and standard. Here we looked at the channels and saw that in between 400 and 500 milliseconds, about 50% of the channels were significant, although that varied across subject as shown by the red uh, shaded area. The rationale for using the percentage of significant channels is that even uh, if an effect is localized in one brain area, because of volume conduction, it will be visible on most channels. Here we have a brain source, and its potential is visible on most channels. Our main question was, if we change the reference, how uh, does that change the percentage of significant channels? Here you can see the general pipeline. For each subject, we pre-process the data differently, in this case changing the reference, then we extract standard and oddball trials and count the number of significant channels. To be able to create confidence intervals, we actually select randomly 50 oddballs and 50 standard trials uh, repetitively. Uh, this is indicated here by Bootstrap. We do that for each subject and this is plotted here. Each dot is a subject and the ordinate represents the difference in significance compared to the raw signal after high pass filtering 0.5 Hz. In this case, the hardware reference is the internal CMS DRL uh, biosim reference. So the two point here at minus 50 indicate two subjects for which the percentage of significant channels decreased by 50 when we use a mastoid reference. This could be due, for example, to extreme noise in one of the mastoid channels. On top of these dots, we also show the mean and standard error. Now let's look at other references. This is a special experiment because the data was recorded with many different types of reference, including nose and ear lobes, to check for the effect of referencing. Uh, so we have, in order from left to right, link mastoid, link earlobes, 
knows uh, electrode CZ, the robust re-referencing method in the PrEP pipeline, two average references computed using EEG lab or field trip, the median, uh, the rest infinity reference, and the longitudinal and circumferential bipolar montage. The surprising fact, as you can see, is that these are significantly below zero. The standard error does not overlap with zero, so a pair T test would be significant. The nose reference is the worst and shows uh, extreme changes compared uh, to the hardware reference, uh, this one known before. We've also tried with two other uh, experiments. In this one, participants saw photograph one at a time and press a button whenever they saw an animal. This is shown here. When we looked at the ERP, we picked the range 250 to 350 milliseconds as the one where the difference between animals and distractor trials had the highest number of significant channels. Again, we tried different references and found that none of them increased the number of significant channels, and most of them decreased it significantly. Here, the amplifier reference was CZ. Finally, uh, this is a popular face categorization dataset available online. In this one, we compared familiar faces versus scramble faces, as shown here. The maximum number of significant channels was in the 250 to 350 millisecond time range. We found that none of the references increased the number of significant channels. Uh, this experiment used a nose reference. And so the take home message is that in terms of reducing the noise in the data, not re-referencing the signal is probably best. In this table, I show to the best of my knowledge, the current consensus on what type of reference to use in different circumstances. For computing significant, you might want to use the hardware reference. Uh, if you do, you can compute a significant mask and use it on a version of the data with the reference of your choice. If you use a reference when computing significance, know that whichever reference you use probably doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, for showing scalp topography, uh, you should use the reference that other people have used in the past in similar experiments. Uh, so results can be compared. In general, this will be average reference. For source localization, you should use the average reference or the infinity reference. There is consensus that the infinity reference is superior to the average reference although it will certainly take time uh, before it is more widely used. Finally, I want to mention the reference to use when running ICA. The best reference is unclear. What is important is that the data is full rank, meaning that no channel is linearly dependent on other channels. Once you've run ICA, you can then re-reference the data and ICA components will be re-referenced as well, at least in the EEG lab. So this is it for this video. Uh, thank you for your attention and I hope to see you in one of my future videos.